Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Word. In this module, I want to show you how you should create a form that you want people to fill in. And then how you shouldn't create a form that you want people to fill in. So I've got a blank document on the screen and I'm going to insert a little table just to give myself a little bit of a structure. I'll just hide the borders on this table. No border, you can still see the grid there. Now I'm going to use the features on the developer tab. Now if you haven't got the developer tab on your ribbon, you need to go to the file tab, down to options, and then custom, customize ribbon. And then on the right there, you'll have a unticked developer option, which you need to tick. And then that will appear on the ribbon, which I've already done. So the tools that I'm going to use is in this controls area. Now, what you see quite often in Word, is if I just come down the screen a little bit, is people will send you a, a document that they want you to fill in and send back. And quite often you get things like this. It might say, enter name, and then some somebody has gone like that with the underscore button and done that. So when you go to type your name in there, it does this. So what's happening is this line is moving along and eventually if they've given you a long line it'll just drop down onto the next page and so on and you have to delete all this line. When I get these sort of forms it's so frustrating and it just means people have been a bit lazy or they don't know what they should be doing in terms of creating a form. Now what I want a form to do is just basically allow me to type my name. I don't want to be deleting um, lines or other bits of information just to get the information that you want from me or the person wants from me so using those sort of underscored lines these is not the way to do forms and I'm sure you've all seen lots and lots of different forms like that so I'll just undo all that lots of times control Z so what you should be using is these tools these controls on the developer tab now You've got lots of different options here. I'm just going to start off with this AA. It's just a text box, basically, but it, it allows you to put some information in this text box. It says there, click or tap here to enter text. It's just a place for you to type. And if you do type, it will grow or shrink as you type, which is exactly what you want so I'll just get rid of that now if I click away from that it still says this information now if you don't want it to say that you've got some options in design mode first of all so I can change this now I could just say for example enter your name click design mode off and that's now what it's going to say so it's quite clear that you want a person to enter their name there. I could also uh, go into properties and change things in here if I so wish. I'm not going to change anything in here. I'm just going to leave this particular one as it is. Closing that one down because I want to go through some of the other options. So that one says enter name. Now you see these three ellipses. If I drag that down and hold my control key down I can actually copy that and then I could maybe change this one because it's just another AA box, just go into um, design mode and change that one to enter email, whatever you want to call it, enter email, and then I don't want a different, I don't want another one of these. I'm going to use a different object up here. So you've got that ticket, ticket box, yes or no? So you might have some narrative um, here. Um, status say this is your status spell it right and then you might say married and you want yes no or something like that you could put a tick box in there like that and then you've got the option of having that on or off and again if you go into properties you've got some options in there down here you can change the symbol to whatever you want really so I'll click OK to that now if I before I click OK to that if I put a title um, 
yes no for example as a title let's see what happens there this is what you get appearing now you can either do the titles and have them on the on the on the form so I didn't do a title for this one properties for that one and I and I'll just put name you'll see what happens here it's going to come above like that name but if you've already got the title like status you don't then want it to say status again so for that for example there is no title so if I go into properties on this one I could put their email as a title and then click OK and it says that above it's not there while you're off it but when you click on it it comes up email now you've also got um, I'm not saying that's the, uh, the way to do it I quite like having the titles in the actual form itself so let's do another title course and then this one I want a drop down list which is going to be this one combo box and then you've got same sort of thing if we're going to design mode I'm going to say select a course and then click off design so it's going to say select a course there's no courses in there at the moment so if you go into properties again you've got that option to do a title which I'm not going to do you then just add your courses so I'll do word and then Excel I'll just do three I'm just pressing enter when I'm type when I've typed this in access so I've got three courses and it says choose an item there so you maybe don't want it to say choose an item so you can maybe modify that and put choose a course actually that will be okay 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 so now there's your courses so I'll select Excel now you might want that to just be none these drop down lists instead of select a course you might just want it to be no course selected or something like that so it's a blank option but there's your list that's a drop down list now the other thing I want to have a look at is if I just click away from this I just want to merge and center this bottom line so I'll just highlight that and I need to go to layout and then you can merge cells into one that's just one single cell now now if I come back to developer what you've also got here which is quite cool is the ability to insert any of the building block gallery content controls so I'm going to click on that one and then you've got quick parts now if I go into properties it gives you the option to change that gallery to for example auto text and then in auto text I've got a general category so if I click OK to that now when I drop this arrow down it will give me the option of bringing in paragraph of information for example so then I've just brought that paragraph in if I drop that down again whatever I've got in that that category of auto text I can just select it I'm not going to bring a chart in or anything like that but there you go now the other thing if I type date you have you have an option for dates if I click on this and there is a date picker control click on that one uh, click or tap date it just gives you the calendar uh, and again if you go if you go into design mode select date or whatever you want it to say take design mode off like so so we've got our form now so a bit of a mix match with this being a, a field or not um, I've got that title there but just to show you because normally you are, are like like I said I would like these to be the um, sort of heading if I just color those in a bit that's how I like to do it so this one there is basically in the wrong place if I just um, let's bring these down and I can put a title in there then click on that one bring it down and then you see how it's going to be a duplicate there when you click on that so you do one or the other basically because yeah, that would get on my nerves going over the top of there but you can you hopefully get the idea so I probably wouldn't use names and these tags just use it as a title like that okay so that's the form and now what you can do if I go back to developer I've got this restrict editing active which is a click that it basically brings this pane up and then you can tick this option 
and you've got these different options underneath that which obviously filling in forms is one that I want to do now the downside to this is this auto text you can't select this auto text from here you won't be able to change this once I start enforcing the, the protection for this document so just show you what I mean by that so basically you, you, you've entered your you've done your form you've got the actual information ready to go so if I enforce this you look, there's the option to do a password so I'll click OK now this is now greyed out so I've selected it what I want but it's now greyed out so I can't change it unless I stop protection and then then I can change it to a different paragraph but once I force protection again that greys out now the rest of it if I put my name in there Steve press tab now normally when you press tab in a table it jumps to the next field but obviously you can see it's not done that so I'll just backspace that off actually and just do a space and then my second name I can't click anywhere else in this table other than these fields so I can take that off I can select a course I can select a date and I can enter an email So, so this is, uh, in my view, a better way of doing a form and sending this out. Whether you do password protect is totally up to you. Take the password off, and then you've got the options there just to send this out as it is. But if you do that, people can click anywhere they want. They can delete things. So they could click into there, delete all that. I don't want them to be able to do that. So if I do Control Z, undo that. You're doing the form. You're using these developer tools, you're locking it down, then the integrity of the form is maintained and you're going to get the correct data back. The only caveat, like I've said already, is this: if you're going to use auto text option, you are going to have to select the auto text before the form is locked and sort of like gets the point of, of using it really. But I'm sure there are people out there that have got uses for the auto text option and will find that quite useful. But that's all I want to talk about on this little video. So it's about not sending forms out with an underscore for people to write on, which then they have to delete the line. It's about using the developer tab, using the controls, and locking the form down to make sure you get exactly the stuff back that you're expecting. So hopefully that was of use. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you on the next one.